dun, 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 dun. Too bad, wife. Come to the rail for advice. Here we go. Just win. That's my plan. All right, it's a battle. I feel like the man. We ready. So wrecked right now. Oh my god. This has been a grueling, grueling tournament. 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m. But four full days, top notch poker when you do. I'm just gonna keep my eyes closed, that's okay. I've been thinking about these hands all night, so I wanted to share. Add four oopsies, okay? Here's the thing, I'm not mad at myself about it. It's just, we're all tired. We're all grinding, and they're all like subtle little things. So, oopsie number one, seven card stud. I have an ace up, Philavia has an ace up, and then there's a bring in. I just folded ace 10 five because it's Phil's, you know, a stud monster, but he was short. And so when he's short, you just have to attack the spot. You can't just like let him have this the pot, you know? Because he's not gonna just fight with three randoms when he's short. If he's got chips, he'll might mess with you with any three. So that's number one. Number two, deuce to seven triple draw. The hand where I drew to four, five, six, nine on the button, four handed. Made the I caught a three against Bryce Yaki, who drew two. Long for short. Going to the last draw, he's drawing a one. He checks. Against a player like him, with no deuces and no sevens, there's, what, there's a chance that he's, he's paired deuces and sevens. And if so, he may use those as blockers to bluff me. So with nine six, I just want to get the showdown as cheaply as possible, pretty much. So that's a hand where I can check back and just give him a free card so I don't get blown off the pot with, if he check raises. And also, my hand is way better than he's going to think. So if he makes a nine seven... He'll probably bet, and if he makes some of, sometimes he's gonna bluff too. It's because I remember someone told me that he actually did. He had he had a big hand. He had deuce two three four seven. He check raised, and I folded. But again, that's one spot I could check back. The other one, the other two, they're from the same hand. Two mistakes. When I made a seven card straight flush. My God. Okay, the play on the turn. I led my top pair, protecting. That's not, this, that's not the play. You know, low draw got there. I just have a pair and a straight flush draw. The play was to just check call, but I bet he raised. I think now is still, I have to pay, I have to call, which is just annoying, which is fine. But then the river, I make the straight flush at the Jack of Diamonds. Another mistake, I check raised him, okay? But a much better play would have been the lead because if I bet that card he's going to think okay well Daniel made the flush Daniel made jacks full of eights full of jacks so if he has king eight or fly he's going to raise me right now I get to re-raise and put in three bets rather than check raise and him not re-raise and win two anyway this is what happens when you play poker professionally all night was downloading my brain is downloading every hand while I'm asleep Boom, 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 boom. Thinking about every spot. Oh my God. Mm. So good news today. The lovely, precious Amanda is coming. She's coming with some stuff for me too. And she's going to come sweat. It's gonna be final. Final five. We feel good about it, obviously. Good jack of chips. You know, and I have a pretty good read on what each player wants to play and what they don't. And as I said yesterday, the stud games are, are mine. No Phil Ivy's there. They're mine. That's that's my territory. Stud, stud eight. Um, Raz, even I noticed Omaha eight. Two. Yeah, those are games where I think we're going to see some overfolding. Not from Brewer, though. But maybe Aki. I don't know. Whatever. I should sleep another. I got to go. I got to get ready. This is wild. So wrecked. You guys have no idea, like, 
how grueling this tournament is, specifically this one. All right, we got Patty doing her business, taking care of things. She comes all the time, checks out the break room, but you know who has never been to the break room? Do you know who? She's never been, never even been to the Paris during the World Series of Poker. She says, come for final tables. You know who it is? Ladies and gentlemen, in my secret break room. Dun, 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 dun. The bad wife. <laughs> oh, shut up. I never came. Oh, stop. I come when it's time. I know, it's time, and today's time the day. Come. This is it. Today's the day. You this look hot. You want to play boxing? I got my <laughs> VR right there. You can I don't know. I'm just pretending. What's like your this... Beat Saber game looking like? I haven't played. Mm. I've, I've been watching you. I'm too focused. Yeah. You're so you're focused. I'm what do you think focused. I am? I'm what do you think I am? You don't think I'm else. focused? Yeah, you're focused. Maybe right. I should play right now. What time is it? 108? You want me to play? <laughs> no, I think I might play. We'll see. No, let me play. Why? You're going to play on mine? Let's see if I can get a score. You're going to screw up my score. Oh, no, you won't because you won't pass it. Never mind. Oh! <laughs> No, it's I'm, been days. I'm, I'm good. I play hard now. Days. I play hard. Only oh, hard. You're so good. I'm so good. I'm only hard. I play hard. Uh, okay. Today it is. <laughs> Lights on. I'm on. Lights on. I'm on. Lot of pressure. I can't let up. Keep my head up. I can't let her. You know I can't stand still. Sticking to the plan still. No bots on my fans real. Oh, and there it is. Yaki thinks that the 10-9 made is probably in good shape nine against Benjamin. However, the Frenchman, a 72% favorite here to double up with 2.4 million in the middle. Potential okay. comeback here for Benjamin. He you know, you a call. He wants you to put it in the box. Yeah. Oh, I understand. Just put the river card in here. Oh. All right. I'll Bryce put the ace here. Bryce Yaki looking for an ace. The ace will finish it. Well. Could also win with a five, a six, a seven. I feel like I'm going to make it. I think it's going to be the six of clubs. I don't mind you making it. As really? long as I make it you as just, well. You could just muck. As long as I make it as well. Oh my God. It's a spade. Put it in the box. Three across. Three across? Nine, eight. Four. Nine. Oh, Nine eight, yeah. yeah, you need it. That's how I die. Good game. That is yeah. how he dies. All right, guys, good luck. <laughs> David Benjamin eliminated yeah. in fifth place after Bryce Yaki catches exactly what he needs on 7th Street. A round of applause good for the legends. Taking home $265,000 for his effort. And this means, I mean, I, I don't want to make it the Negron show too much, <laughs> but this like means he's one more. Elimination closer. That one felt obvious. To winning that bracelet. Right. Yeah. All in? His hands all in. All. He shouldn't, but yeah. Here we go. <laughs> got a 9-7. Right. You got an 8 draw. <clears throat> wow, so Bryce Jockey here, a strong right. favorite one, to send Dylan Smith to the rail and reduce this field to the final three. Bryce Jockey in the lead with a 9-7 made versus an 8 draw. Jockey in front. All right, let's go home. Yeah. <laughs> Two to come. <laughs> Dylan will need to improve. Dylan Legrano, also a professional commentator. That's going to be tough. And GG. Yeah. Good game. GG, bud. Good game, guys. Oh, wow. That's it. Yaki has him dead. And Dylan Smith is our fourth place That's finisher. Close. Ladies and gentlemen, are you not entertained? We are down to three already at the final table of the 50K he PPC. It, Smith yeah. takes home $363,000 for his efforts. Please smash that like button if you think Negron is going to take this down. Well, sure is he Seven Ali. card stud eye. This is where Nick gives you some sort of look. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, what a great point song. you make. That's my favorite one that he goes to now. The full that's shutdown. That, that's that's really good. <laughs> just where do I go from there? Just stroking the ego yeah. of the dog, right? No, it's just like <laughs> okay. Sure stud high. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's why, I'm on to him. I was though. checking too. <laughs> yeah. Stud I mean, high. Uh, stud it's high become one of my favorite also, games. I, I really love stud high. high. There's a lot of room for I, creativity. Mean, stud yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, in stud eight, you would have got a call. <laughs> I would have raced. This is the game I find that. Newer mixed game players have the most difficulty with. I couldn't agree with you more. I think the old school yeah. guys really exploit newer players, up. not only because stud is, you know, an older school game, 
that many of the Limit players who play Limit Hold'em maybe play some Limit Stud as well. And as such, with that wealth of experience, they really tend to to show you lines that the newer school guys haven't really Overkill. carved out for themselves. Yeah. Just one, of, just one of those is good. Yeah, and, you know, the, the stud eight variant is a little bit more simple in certain runouts when you clearly have a high hand that's just praying to hold on, or when you have certain situations where you have the low locked up. So there tends to be a bit lower complexity. This really is the game that is the most difficult, that has the most creativity, and I think where Daniel figures he has the highest edge on these two other guys. Yeah, Daniel's played a decent amount of stud, and Yaki doesn't need to have added experience to know the value of split kings. Daniel blocking the king and also having an overcard. He's going to play this hand always, whether he two bets it or, or just defends it. Yeah, you'll see aggressive players, especially in cash game, when there's a steal spot, such as king being the highest card, and you have a king in your hole to maybe even play back. Daniel opts to take the slightly more conservative route Healthy board development for both parties. Goes bet call. Daniel on the wheel draw now. I think this is a spot you could potentially consider a semi bluff as Daniel, both either facing a check or facing a bet going with a semi bluff raise, and he does take the spot. Yeah, Yaki allows him to by checking. And sometimes you'll see these kings would rather check this street and face the bet because they realize that when they lead, they can get raised and then really find themselves Adrift. I think the other thing that he's doing here, Ali, is he's just really protecting his weaker hands. He's going to have a lot of hands that opened with that big king that just contained maybe like king nine seven. Now you've got king queen nine seven six. You've got no hand to speak of. You want to check fold. You need to balance that by occasionally putting your stronger hands in that check. Yeah, line. sure. Neither player improves on six street, and so Yaki now seizing the initiative once more. Negranu can look like a good card for you. And that was kind of a cool line from, from Bryce. He check called as Negrano's board was oh, getting a wow. little scarier. And then, wow, Negrano makes a wheel and Bryce makes kings up. Buckle up, boys. 500 is going to become a million. And that's a sick feeling if you're Yaki because you can see the coordinated nature of the board. You see the two diamonds. It feels like straight or flush. That's what Daniel represents. Maybe trips. Straight. Good. Bryce pays it off. I think a very well played hand by both of them. Yeah, that was a cool hand. And, and when Bryce looks at Negrano's hand, he may think he had that king five of diamonds for the more natural semi bluff in the hole. Looks like I got 13, seven, seven, five, if I just counted right. I think I counted right. If I have 13, seven, seven, five, and I just lost 751, 1.5, man, I had a lot, but we're still good. I think that makes me chip leader. Uh, it's going exactly as I said. I mean, literally, I told you that in the stud games I was going to mash, and I'm doing that in the Omaha 8. Um, you know, and this is never disrespectful, because, I like, here's the thing. I, Brewer is fucking unbelievable. He's an incredible big bet player. But Omaha 8, is, he's, that's, that's a weaker game for him, too. He's playing hands like, overplaying hands like King King bad, and like that hand here, Ace King 10-6. It's, you know, it's fine. But anyway, um, yeah, so we're doing good. Everything's going to plan. Why are they taking pictures of you? Are you like some superstar? Instead of you. Yeah. <laughs> they got plenty of them. Okay. We're going to be on TV. Okay. We have two weeks worth of vlogs. There you, two weeks worth, man. You got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I know. It's not an it's anagram. A, it's an affiliate. Stop muting your mic. People want to hear. It's the ASMR factor. Livingston, get him. Has he, is he doubling down, by the way? That looks like a second flavor by Negrano. Queen 10 suited, limping once more. I remember that there was a time, by the way, where Daniel limping the button was kind of the avant-garde. He kind of became one of the, the foremost people in terms of exercising that small ball approach. Studied, you do see some of these very studied professionals also now integrating that approach. So it, it's kind of this case. Whoa, wow. Wow. Well, hang on. Yaki took us north. Jack-10 suited. Brewer is going to be delighted to see it. Very interested to see how Brewer plays this. We can we can slow play, can we not? Or does calling 550 fill here already just put us top of range? I think no matter what Brewer does, it's going to look incredibly strong. Um, yeah, I think that at that stack depth, you can slow play aces without giving away your your well, hand strength. It's tricky because I think most hands Brewer has here want to either shove or fold. 
So you have to think, okay, what am I? What's my flatting range here? Like, what other kind of hands am I balancing this with? I do think it's it's a nice play. It goes with the call. I, I do think there are some hands. Some king jack suited, perhaps some pocket. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of the pairs just want to shove. Um, but his hand is just so strong, and making a raise that's not all in, if anything, looks even stronger. Yeah. So I do kind of like this play. Oh, a out of ten. ten. In the window oh, with two and spades, and we're going to see some real action. Well, they're going to see big fireworks here. I mean, Yaki has flopped a monster with the spade draw on his top pair. Negrano's not going to find the escape hatch promptly. I mean, <laughs> TBD, by the way. Negrano has 8%, which really he doesn't think he has looking at this board in this situation. Bryce can go for a check raise here, or, of course, as the pre-flop aggressor, keep on betting. Yeah, and I think if, if Bryce bets here, Brewer probably just shoves. And that shove, I feel like, is going to look a lot like two overs in spades. Yeah, it sure could. He could definitely, like, some of the hands that Brewer could have that flat would be those suited broadways, the king-jack suited, king-queen suited, queen-jack suited. Yeah. The thing that Bryce knows, of course, with this hand is that you are never in bad shape. If you're up against a flush draw, you got the pair. If you got up against a hand, a bigger pair than that, you have the flush draw. And Brewer does effectively shove, and I think Daniel's going to be able to sniff this out and get away from it. There's just too much strong action behind him. Brewer either has a trap like this, or one of those hands we're talking about with overs and a flush draw. He's still got to worry about Yaki having a big over pair. Having said that, it's easier when we can see all the cards, isn't it? Daniel still has top pair, third kicker. Yeah, but if he, Daniel goes through the action, he limps. Bryce raising out of a small blind is definitely strong, instead of just completing. And then Chris just flatting. He knows that Chris will have a lot of medium strength hands here, but once in a while we'll be trapping with something like aces. My guess is like yours, Alex. I think Daniel is going to get away from this. Yeah, and, and Daniel really doesn't like these marginal spots where he has two opponents who have shown a lot of interest in the hand, and he has one of these kind of marginal hands that has not a lot of good visibility on turns and rivers. And I think that's very smart of him. I mean, I don't think it's... And then he knows he'll be with 11 and a half million potentially in a heads up situation where he likes his odds. So these are well, all factors that he needs to think about as well. As someone who called the 550 from Yaki Pre and now in the face of a follow through from Bryce puts in 2.3 of 2.6, what for both of you is bottom of range for Brewer here? Uh, bottom of range would probably be like his flush ten? draws or like maybe like oh, King 10 King suited. 10. Yeah. King 10 or flush draws. Yeah. Oh man, I had queen ten of clubs. I thought you, I thought you had queen ten. Daniel, I lose an, hopefully delighted. We have the ace. Did he step out of the crossfire? I had a ten too, Brewer. And it's a we stone flip, as you can see on the. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure if that down. takes into account also. the one ten that's gone, but we are certainly a in a. What a situation! I think it situation. might. Cause I think the jack ten might so be a small many. favorite that's how we with do. ten left in the game. That's how we do. We know what's up. Say my first rodeo. Come on now. Come on now. Maybe not, though. Come on now. Huh. Big pimping right now. Yeah, I think the <laughs> graphic up there counts the ten of clubs Ooh. as well. Watch a queen come. <laughs> Daniel, by the way, somehow uninvolved in this pot, and yet the man who is most oh. proud of it is the spade rolls off. And that's that. Good Ace is drawn dead. Sick one. I mean, I just... Sick one, bro. You lost every hand. I'll tell you what, gentlemen. There is no shame in busting with two Sorry, aces. Bro. Brewer, what can he do? And it's funny because you heard Bryce sympathetically saying, you lost every hand. And it did feel like the vast majority of occasions on which he got involved, he really ended up coming up on the short end of it. Spared his tournament life in a critical spot with that king nine. I mean, no reason to hang his head. I know he wears his heart on his sleeve. He's tremendously disappointed here, but Massive respect to Chris And Brewer at the end of the day, a fantastic result from a guy who plays had? primarily no limit hold'em, coming yeah. third in the PPC, his that second obvious? final table in this you tournament. Huh? I you you did? did? Really? Yeah. Big Good props luck, to Chris. He too. didn't run yeah. very well today. He played sure. great. Oh boy, here we go. 10, 9, 50, heads up. He's got about uh, 17. I feel like the man right there folding that Queen 10 of Clubs. That is not a trivial, easy fold, ladies and gentlemen. That is not a trivial easy let shows. But I'm that good that I folded. That fucking good. That good. Whoo, baby, what a laid out. <laughs> I'll tell David the spot. He'll understand. He'll understand. I'll tell David I'll lay out. 
Big hand here for Bryce. <clears throat> King and queen Ooh. three. Nice wrap with top pair for Yaki. This is a good bit of hand. And too much for Daniel to get away from it with the, the gut shot, the pair of queens, and the backdoor flush draw. So 500 was the price required to get to this spot for Daniel, and now another 400 requested and delivered. Pot grows to two million. 10 Ooh. on the turn that gives Daniel queens and tens and a heart draw, plus the gutter. And the straight flush straight draw for, for dessert. Uh, this is a pretty, pretty big action turn. Yeah, Bryce has the straight. I expect Bryce to just go for a bet here, charging two pairs, sets, flush draws, etc. Of course, he has to be a little bit concerned about ace-jack, but he can probably just bet fold this hand if he thinks that Negreanu's check-raising range mostly consists of ace-jack combos. In some worlds, he would also check this back, be a little bit disguised and under-repped. The thing about, though, betting and then getting raised is we have kings and tens for the full house draw just in case the jack nine is no you good, do. which it's is relevant. And against an aggressive player, if you bet and get raised, it's a very difficult decision. I think the way Daniel plays with a lot of his semi-bluffs hands like this, I don't Three. think he's going to turn those into bluffs. I think he's just going to check call a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and just as an opponent, I, it's, if Daniel was a lot spicier, Daniel is probably the guy who probably would not raise here unless he really had the goods or... He also doesn't have the right sort of class of blockers to be raising here. Absolutely. If you have something like Queen Jack, Jack 10, you have a little bit more incentive. I think Daniel has too much hand to fold, though. He's got a straight flush draw in addition to two pair. The problem a little bit with Daniel's hand, and it is a clear continue, is that he's never actually going to end up with the nuts other than the Jack of Hearts on this river. That's true, but this is... <laughs> Effectively, the nuts. Hearts slide on in after Negreanu check called the 1.3 million. And with no heart in his hand and blocking some of Daniel's bluff what? catchers, I think, yeah, Bryce is just going to check this back. And I think Daniel should have considered leading that river as well. I agree with you. That's nice. Get a big one. That's straight. This has been a bit of a heavyweight bout since the onset of Heads Up, gentlemen, with both players having been kind of put onto the ropes a little bit. And then finding their way back to the center of the ring. Some big blows exchanged most recently in Potlum in Omaha. Negranu working his way back into a chip lead now. Another interesting hand here, both catching a piece of it. Pair and a straight draw. Back into the limit hold'em streets. Free flop, Yaki was the raiser. Negranu defended, check called the 400,000 with nines in the gutter. Yaki with top pair and the gutter. Should find a bet here. Yeah. Ranu finding the call. Not finding improvement, however. And now if he faces this third barrel into four million, man, things get tough. Yeah. A lot of King X, Queen X, maybe more so the former than the latter. He doesn't have hearts. He probably would prefer not having the 10 as a bluff catcher. Wonderful run out, really, for Bryce with this hand. Now knows that Daniel has probably a nine or a queen. A queen probably would have already called, so it's probably a nine. And I think a computer would pretty much always call Daniel's hand, but he might be able to find a good fold here. Payday for Yaki. All right, it's a battle, 7.35 of what is there, total 27? So he's got a lead, but it's back and forth. We're going to be playing 5 and 10 limits, or 500 million. 
you know, and all you got to do is be here for your rush. That's all it is to it. I lost a few pots, but uh, we're, we're going to be good, you know. We're, um, we're doing our thing, and I'm just going to relax and keep playing great. I feel no regrets. No regrets. Play to the end. To the end we go. I missed the whole thing. Do that again. Any advice? There? <laughs> Coming to the rail for advice. Here we go. Just win. That's my plan. <laughs> Eventual victor, along with that bracelet and all the prestige that comes with it. Yeah, we maybe did not see some of the monster coolers other than the ace ten, the aces versus jack ten of spades, but we really have seen poker befitting of the occasion. Right now? Seven point three five. And well a huge hand brewing, okay. brewing here immediately. Right as the first hand back from break. Wow. Yeah, Negrano takes us up to 750,000. Yaki pots it. I mean, Negrano has a hand that is very tempted to call here. And unintrusive, by the way, in the face of the pot All right. from Yaki. Could kind of that special pot. recipe to. Already is. <laughs> yeah, there's double suited live cards, or you figure they're yeah. live a lot. Those types of hands usually always call three bets. Wow. Seven, six, deuce. Pot. One pair and an open ender. Yaki with the try ace of hearts immediately right, pops I don't it. need to film it. They're filming it, right? But Daniel okay, actually buddy. has more Good equity luck. here. Pair and hearts. open ender. Cool. And it goes. Yaki it. covers. The best hand. And Daniel's right. He, Deuce, four, five, he has the best eight, equity. nine, ten. Not By often. And backdoor clubs. A guy's up against aces. Yeah, but I have jacks. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> He, and uh, he doesn't have hearts, no. Proclaims the best hand with what is currently one pair, but that's Pot Limit Omaha for you. What Daniel doesn't want to see is a seven or six. Those would be very poor cards for him. The five and a ten would end it right away. Or Yeah. King on the turn, aces have held on. But you can see even now they're Half still the flipping. Half the deck for Daniel to win this, to, to double up here. Well, Negrano needs that half of the deck to show up. Otherwise, Yaki's gonna take his second bracelet of the summer already and leave Daniel in second yet again. And a deuce! again this is a game in full reign that can play huge raise true given the extra street of betting Daniel very quickly comes in with a raise here pretty standard probably with most of his range here yeah, and they both have deuce. some very respectable holdings yeah, wired pairs and this is very standard for Bryce also against a range that could be any two from Daniel he just happened to run into wired tens yeah so the limp three bet becomes a four bet. Big pot here, and these wired pairs, in particular the eights being disconnected with the deuce, are so much more deceptive than the split pairs. That's right, if Bryce were to catch an eight here, it would really look like a brick. As Especially played, the eight of hearts. As played, the hands that the eights are in front of are those coordinated three spades sorts of hands. That's right, or the queen jack tens, the king queen jacks. So it's decision point here for Bryce. He did not connect with his wired pair but he realizes that two pair might be winning the hand. He could potentially still be ahead if Daniel had something like a flush draw or three to a straight. Yeah, the 6-5 offsuit not supposed to be helping Negranu. But we're at the typical inflection point in fifth that if you call now, unless it comes a really scary sixth street, you're probably going to seven. Yep. But I think he does have a pretty clear call here now. For one thing, the pot was bloated to three small bets on third street. For another thing, like, like Ali just mentioned, those cards unlikely to help Negranu. Agree that he's gonna be forced to call sixth now as well and then make another decision on seventh, but he does pair. Sixth. Yeah. Okay, we and got 7.8 million in the pot. This is a huge seventh street here for both of them. Does Bryce Daniel make two pair? probably thinks that Daniel has a hand very similar to what he has either. And Daniel makes two pair. Yeah, the better two pair, tens and fives. Yaki defining his hand by leading on sixth street and checking now. We anticipate that it is two pair and we expect tens up to be the better hand. This is such a gross spot for Bryce. 
He was probably sweating the no spotter and thinking possibly it could be a three. <sighs> wow. I mean, the price is so insane right now. Yeah, the question is, is Negreanu ever going to turn one pair into a bluff? Like yeah, if, you, if Negreanu like just 10, has 10 these 9, tens. queen 9, king 9. And then if he's not turning that into a bluff, where do his bluffs come from? They come from missed clubs that he would have had to have two really strong clubs to, to three bet on third street, something like ace king or ace jack of Miss clubs. Spades, you mean, right? No, for Negreanu I'm talking about because he's got the two clubs there. Got it. Or essentially some of the 10-9, jack-9, king-9 that now make a pair on sixth right. and realize they're probably behind Bryce's two-pair hand. I mean, 10-jack could be in there too. Right. He, he, but he has to call the turn with something, and it's not going to be just probably naked gutter. So it's at least 10-jack, some sort of club-club holding. Or could he ever just turn a hand like split queens or buried tens into a bluff? And these spots are sick because you really feel like you're beat, but you're also getting a great price. Beyond. Better than nine to one. This would be a very disciplined fold from Bryce Yaki. And a difficult one to make. You're just loving the situation as Daniel. You know you're winning. Question is, are you going to win a 9.2 or 10.2 million pot? Tens up. Yeah. There's your answer. Eight figure pot there. <laughs> Real coming alive. Look at this purple satin number back here. Yeah, that one has a... We've all had that look on our face. Of and we know, we can see how slim the margins are. What is it big, 250? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know this about Bryce, guys, but he managed an Instagram account called Bryce's Bites, where he showcases exquisite dishes from the upscale restaurants that he frequents. I didn't realize he was such a foodie. Neither did I, but I'll have to check out that account. You think this guy in the slob drop t-shirt back there That's is a, a foodie? PLO. With the Miller Lite? <laughs> no. Maybe a different type of food. <laughs> Again, Daniel with a clear open, the two high cards, the suitedness, we prefer raising with this hand. And Yaki. Bryce with a clear continue. Yeah, double suited. 10 wow. 7 7 board. The wow. club draw for Yaki. Trip sevens for Negranu. We could see them fight further forward. Gut shot as well for Yaki. Yeah, with the eight. Note that gut shot is clean as it doesn't fill up. Daniel. Bryce can play this two ways. Yeah, calling is definitely. Probably the preferred route. These paired boards with these draws are wow, and he just goes. Yeah, the problem when Daniel moves in, he's then committed. Yeah. Yaki going high variance here with all of that equity. He'll be delighted that he's not up against clubs or a boat. All of his outs. I got trips against live. the flush draw. And a straight draw. And a straight draw. Ace Queen Jack. No, Ace Queen, Ace Queen Jack, seven. At I got it. I blocked it. Yeah, ace, queen, jack, seven. We need to fade flush draw, straight draw. Big paint, paint, paint. See some paint. Yeah, king of clubs. Queen on the turn. Seven's full for Daniel. Yaki draws dead.
Bryce Yaki left to collect second and a doggy bag. 768,000. Daniel, first, congratulations. I'm going to be with you in just one second. Bryce, you have a first, and now you have a second. Does this result push you even further to go strong for the rest of the World Series of Poker? Can't go any stronger than playing everything. <laughs> and talk to me about this heads-up battle. What a battle it was with Daniel. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's a legend. I mean, he's like the biggest name in poker and has been for over 10 years. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, for sure. Daniel, congratulations again. <laughs> days since your last WSOP bracelet in Las Vegas. Talk to me about your emotions right now. You're experiencing some joy, obviously, but is there relief as well? The emotion, relief, tears, all of it, because it's really been a long time, you know? Yeah. And I love playing, and I always want to win, and this has always been my favorite event to win, you know? And playing heads up against Bryce was a pleasure, because he's a monster. I didn't want to play big bets pots with him at all. You know, I tried to stay out of his way, but I'm just thankful that, you know, Nothing bad happens. <laughs> yeah. And talk to me about what it means. You have your fans here, your team, and of course your wife, Amanda. What does it mean to you to have them here to celebrate this historic day? Yeah, I, I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm mostly like a lone wolf during the World Series. Like I do yes. my own thing, but having everybody here, I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it, but I feel really nice to see the crowd like that. And my wife here. And with that, Daniel, I present to you this WSOP gold bracelet. The last hour, never tried to go the fast route. Marathon, not a race. Putting hours in a cash out. Game time. Third card now. Oh, the 10 giving Coleman a straight. The river card is a queen for the straight. And he cuts down Daniel Nogranu. Come on. Come on, man. Does have and Negreanu gets wow. away from the trip aces. Another great ball. Wow. You know I can't stand still. Sticking to the plan still. No bots on my fans real. Stay true on the man still. No. And it goes. Yagi covers. The best hand. Or, yeah. Yet again. And the deuce! Yeah. Yaki going high variance here with all of that equity. He'll be delighted that he's not up against clubs. Queen on the turn. Sevens full for Daniel. Yaki draws dead. I'll give this one to Patty over there. Yeah, good job, boy. Hey, well done, Daniel. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Home sweet home, people. So people wonder, like, what do you do after a big win like that? Right? I'm Go so party. proud of you. It's, it's, we're going to the club tonight. It's here Can in Lake, you, look how Lake tired Las Vegas. Our voices are now. Yeah. What if we went to the club on the boat? I would it's, die. It's, it's, it's Not party, mind. champagne popping, boats and hoes. Is that what you boats want? and hoes. Let's go. What, we need, Is that what boat, you need? Boats and hoes. Yeah. 
You, I'll take you. You love boats and hose. I love hose. She <laughs> loves hose. Yeah, so I'm home. Brought my stuff. I feel like I went, I was just telling her, I feel like I went on a vacation for like a week and I'm just back from the country because that's what it's like staying down there for five straight days. Yeah. But she gets why. It's important I had I to stay it. because it's such a grueling tournament. I wanted you and, to stay. You know, I wanted to win it. We did. And tomorrow, uh, well, tonight I'm going to, you know, respond to some messages. A lot of people said nice things and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow is a 10K single draw. And I hear, oh, I didn't tell you this, but what? of all the nine games, you know, the one that I ended up feeling oddly the most uncomfortable one yeah. was single draw. Because I was like out of shape in single draw. I haven't played yeah. a lot of it, which is, you know, that's the tournament tomorrow. Guess but you're in shape. I'm, I'm fine. I'll on. be all right. But I mean, I wasn't, yeah, I didn't feel like I had like, you know how I always have like exploits and moves that I make? You didn't have any moves? I was just kind of playing <laughs> my cards. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. You, you won know. the best event. Hmm. You won the yeah. event of all events. Stud games, bro. Stud I games. Mean. If you don't, if you want to learn how to play stud, I'm not even kidding people. Check out the videos I do. How to play stud, how to play stud eight, how to play Raz. Like they're pretty good. They're only 20 minutes and I promise you, they'll make you decent. It'll Are teach you Are we talking about like ads right now? Hey, just like... Ads. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. I'm home. It is 11 o'clock. Nothing happened tonight. I, I didn't even eat today. Is that Me weird? either. I never do that. I always eat like a pig. Yeah. I was like not even hungry. I was just on just freaking nitro cold brew. Yeah. 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 So the triple draws tomorrow, the single draws tomorrow, but we're, it starts at 2 p.m. We will not be there on time. No chance. I will play Beat Saber tomorrow. How many people asked you about Beat Saber today? A thousand. I don't even know how many. It's, I can't believe how many people who watch the vlog were there today taking pictures and asking about Beat Saber. How many Saber. pictures did you take today? hundred. How many think I took? Five thousand. That's crazy. <laughs> but I mean, no, I, I'm serious. It was a lot. Yeah. On behalf of both of us though, yeah. I'd say to the people who do show your appreciation, we both appreciate it. Very sweet. Especially the kind, sweet people. I loved everyone. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, we live in a world, right? Where we spend so much time and energy on the negative. Like all the like, cause it's true, right? It's actually nice to see. Yeah. That a lot of people are nice. Yeah, because like here's the thing, like I have a couple of haters, you know what I mean? A couple. But I don't, I don't want to give them any energy. You know who I want to give energy to? Those people that showed up, that waited. You know, I was doing interviews for an hour, I mean, I know and those I people there. stayed on the rail and waited for pictures, and I made sure before I left, it was like anybody else. We got everybody. It gives you like hope that people are nice to people. Yeah. People. Because you read the vlogs, and sometimes people are dicks, but like. The majority of people when you meet well, them Twitter, are people nice people. Nasty things. Yeah, yeah, they are. They yeah. were. Yeah, and it's like, you know what it tells me too? I had a blast with everybody on the rail. We're gonna close, it's like, if you read some stuff about some people, the way they write about me, it's like I'm the most, I'm the can most cancerous evil Fuck human being ever, right? Yeah. But then when you look at the reality of the situation, we had a freaking rock and thunderdome Dude, with tons of fans. It was like a main event. Yeah, it was like oh, so alive. Bryce Yaki said, "Is this how the rails normally are?" <laughs> I was like, "I do don't know about that." Do you want me to that. say fuck some people for you right here? No, I don't do that. Believe me, no energy for those people. Yeah. But haters, All right. guess what? Eat some of that. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, y'all. Lights on, I'm on. Lights on, I'm on. Lot of pressure, I can't let up.